a self-portrait of Leonardo da Vinci, the strong and sensitive face of one of the greatest figures of the Renaissance. To understand the things that passed before his eyes and the way he interpreted them, we must first know of the Renaissance. Leonardo lived during the 15th century when the Renaissance centered in Italy, in cities such as Florence. This was a glorious period, an era dominated by the ideas and accomplishments of men. Men were enjoying a newfound freedom, the freedom of expression. In Renaissance Europe, man might use his ingenuity to create, to build, or he might use this same ingenuity to destroy with instruments like this giant cannon sketched here by Leonardo. This genius saw his world as one in which evil, fierce and unyielding, stood side by side with unmatched beauty, charm and grace. In his art, Leonardo mirrored the accomplishments of the Renaissance in the fields of the sciences, such as geometry, and the arts, such as architecture and painting. This was the art of Leonardo. But a century before, an artist had painted this Madonna and child. The figures are stiff, with little freedom of expression. They are symbols, not human beings. But with the coming of the art of Leonardo da Vinci, the Madonna and child, all people, become living, breathing persons. At any moment, we expect them to move, perhaps to speak. For this art reflects the vibrant awakening of the Renaissance. This is the product of a skilled hand and a great mind. The hand, the mind, the genius of Leonardo da Vinci. Though we can't be sure, we believe this farmhouse in Italy is where Leonardo was born in 1452. The farmhouse overlooks the small Italian village of Vinci, from which Leonardo took his name. Around the village are miles of beautiful landscape with which the boy became acquainted early in life. Leonardo did more than just see the scenery. He observed it, and what he observed he drew. Leonardo had always wanted to be an artist, and at the age of 13, he left the village of his youth and traveled to the city of great artists, Florence. Here, he was apprenticed to the sculptor and painter, Verrocchio. Under this master, young Leonardo learned his craft quickly. Together with Verrocchio's other students, he painted Madonnas and gained a fine reputation. But after leaving the workshop, his restless mind turned to other interests besides painting. He was curious about many things, botany, anatomy, everything intrigued him. He drew and sketched constantly. He was not only an artist, but a military engineer Thousands of Leonardo's ideas are preserved in the notes and sketches of his remarkable notebooks. What kind of man was this artist? An early biographer said, Leonardo set himself to learn many things and then abandoned them after he had begun them. Leonardo's thirst for knowledge was never satisfied. Among the many things that challenged him were the intricacies of the human body, its vital organs, such as the heart, its complex network of muscles and nerves, and the mystery and meaning of the creation of life itself. Although he left thousands of drawings and sketches, Leonardo left only a few examples of his finished painting. In the Uffizi Museum in Florence is this Baptism of Christ by the master Verrocchio. It is famous 
because one of the figures was painted by his young apprentice, Leonardo. The figures of Christ and St. John are stiff and statue-like, the work of Verrocchio, who is best known for his sculpture. The two angels are far more lifelike. Each was painted by a student of Verrocchio. The angel on the right seems simply wide-eyed, angelic. But this angel reflects thought and quiet inward emotion. His face tells us his state of mind as he watches the great drama taking place. Yes, the angel on the left is the work of a budding genius, the work of Leonardo. Also hanging in the Uffizi Museum is another of Verrocchio's paintings, the Annunciation. One figure is by Leonardo. The Angel Annunciate is the work of the great artist. See the natural grace of the hands. How the angel's wings are copied exactly from the wings of birds that Leonardo observed. The angel's hair shows fine texture and highlight. Notice the fullness and natural drape of the angel's robes. The entire figure has been caught in a moment of suspense. Even at this early time in his career, Leonardo is following his own observations on painting. A painter has two subjects of primary importance, man and the state of man's mind. The latter is difficult since it must be conveyed by the means of gestures and movements of various parts of the body. Gestures and movements play important roles in this painting, Leonardo's unfinished masterpiece, The Adoration of the Magi. Here, an adoring crowd has gathered to feast its eyes on the young savior and his mother. Although the artist did not complete the figure, the Madonna's face reflects tenderness love and affection for her child. In the background of the same painting, we see Leonardo's skill in showing perspective. This was the result of Leonardo's careful planning. This sketch for the adoration shows how the artist placed his figures in a design of depth. Depth gives all his paintings a three-dimensional quality. Depth and perspective of background are very much a part of this famous painting by Leonardo. It is called the Madonna of the Rocks. The painting is made even more three-dimensional through the expert use of light and shadow. This modeling of objects with light and dark is another technique brought to new perfection by Leonardo. Here again we find a beautiful Leonardo Madonna, not an austere religious symbol, but a living mother full of affection for her child. She moves as if to guard her own child and the kneeling infant St. John from the troubles and dangers of the world. While St. John kneels, his hands joined in supplication and the infant Jesus raises his hand in benediction. An angel points to John as one of the first to recognize the divinity of Jesus. So hands in this painting, as in many of Leonardo's works, do much to point up the expressiveness and drama of the scene. Graceful, expressive hands add to the beauty of one of the world's most famous paintings, the Mona Lisa by Leonardo. In this haunting portrait, in the collection of the Louvre Museum in Paris, Leonardo seems to have captured the lady's very personality. Is she beginning to smile? Or is she recalling to herself a past moment of beauty and tenderness? We shall never be certain. But this is more than a portrait. If we block out the face, we see that Leonardo has painted a landscape a view of the beautiful world of nature he loved. Though the colors have grown darker through the years, 
we still experience an almost unreal feeling of character and intelligence through Leonardo's expert use of light and shadow. The Mona Lisa is often called the world's most famous portrait. Do you agree? To some, the Last Supper is supreme among Leonardo's paintings. Centuries have passed since it was painted on the walls in the dining hall of a monastery in Milan, and it is badly damaged. Yet this fresco is truly one of the great art masterpieces of all time. To get some idea of its former glory, we must look at a reconstructed copy of The Last Supper. Again, we find an amazing depth and perspective in the scene, so characteristic of Leonardo. There is the same masterful handling of light and shade, the same intelligent arrangement of the figures. The plan of the painting is beautiful and effective. There is a central figure. This figure is balanced by two groups on either side. Each group is made up of three disciples. Jesus is in the center of the painting, alone. He utters to his disciples the terrible words, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Never before in the history of painting has an artist portrayed such a variety of human expression and gesture. Here was man filled with horror, dread, terror, anguish, anger, and despair. And yet, in the midst of this violent scene of men troubled by their own thoughts and deeds, Leonardo, man of the Renaissance, renews his faith in humanity with the calm, serene, incredibly beautiful figure of Christ. The Last Supper is indeed the work of creative genius, a genius who sought to portray man and the state of man's mind. In doing so, the curious, sensitive, and inventive mind, the accurate hand, and the observant eyes of Leonardo da Vinci opened the way for men to see the world and interpret it differently than they had ever done before.